as the 47th governor of the state of Texas from 2000 to 2015. Governor, thanks so Howdy. much. We received thousands of responses from voters in our three states and around the country, but our three states focusing here tonight. We asked them what was most important to them, the number one issues facing voters here in New Hampshire, Iowa, and South Carolina. Topping the list, immigration and the economy. Governor, what would your administration's policy be toward illegal immigrants already in the U.S.? Well, the real issue for us in this country today is what's happening uh, all across our, our great land, and that is the cost that uh, illegal immigration is uh, having on this state. And until we get that border secure, it's not going to stop. It's like a, uh, a serious wound. You want to staunch the flow, and that's not what's happening in this country now. For 30 years, we've heard people talk about, well, if we'll deal with this immigration, this illegal immigration issue, if we'll reform it, then we'll secure the border. And now we're in plus 30 years of that. The American people don't trust Washington, D.C. to deal with this issue of immigration reform until we secure the border. And I know a little something about securing the border. As a matter of fact, last summer I looked in the president's eye when he came to Dallas, Texas, and I said, Mr. President, if you don't secure the border, Texas will. And that's exactly what we did. We sent our Department of Public Safety, our Texas Rangers, our Parks and Wildlife Wardens, putting them literally in the river and we also deployed our Texas National Guard. And because of that effort, we saw a 74% decrease in the number of app, uh, apprehensions that were occurring in that part of the border. You can secure the border. It takes boots on the ground. It takes the s security fencing in the metropolitan areas, and you have aviation assets. And I'm talking about from Tijuana to El Paso to Brownsville flying 24-7, looking down with the technology to be able to see what's going on and identifying where there's activities that are obviously illegal or suspicious and fast response team. That's what you have to do. I know how to secure that border. If you elect me President of the United States, I will promise you one thing. The will to secure that border will reside in the Oval Office. Governor, I want to stick with immigration as many of our voters are concerned. So much is made of illegal immigration. Until we get a handle on that, should we reduce the number of green cards granted legally each year to folks wanting to get into this country? through the legal process. Should we cut down that number and what should that number be each year? Well, I think we need to be smart about our immigration and the agency that we have today can't even keep up with people that come into the country when you give a visa and they overstay it and we don't know where they are. I mean, Bobby, we know that they can find a package halfway around the world with UPS and we can't keep up with the people that uh, have overstayed their visas. I mean, for crying out loud, that agency is broken. You need to fix that agency of government that deals with these individuals that are coming in here, be thoughtful about what is the workforce that we need, allow the people in this country that we need in this country, and those that have overstayed their, their visas, you go find them, you pick them up, and you send them back wherever they're from. But should we reduce the number temporarily of legal? I don't, I don't know whether we need to reduce the number or not until we're able to find out you know, who these people are that are in the country illegally. That's the real challenge, and if we get that taken care of first, then we can make a smart decision about whether or not we do or we don't need to have uh, more visas being handed out. George Will recently said on my radio show the biggest problem facing the next president is a, an economy with a 2% GDP. If you're elected president, how can you make Washington and this country grow again at something greater than 2%? Well, it's one of the reasons I'm a little bit more than just a a passable expert on that because the state of Texas created more jobs than anybody in this room uh, over the course of the time that I was the governor. One third of all the jobs that were created in America occurred while I was the governor of the state of Texas. And we did it by having smart policies in place, tax policies that let you keep more of what you work for, a regulatory climate that is fair and predictable, legal system that didn't allow for oversuing, and public school policies that basically were accountable that said to these businesses, you're going to find a skilled workforce in that state. And the way you do that in America is inextricably intertwined to our energy policy, a North American energy policy, I will suggest to you, Canada, the United States, Mexico, has more known resources than that, of, of Russia and Saudi Arabia, drive down the electric you. cost, put those regulations into place you, that Governor. drive the income tax down, and you can create a renaissance in manufacturing thank you. like we, we never seen. Time. Thank you, Governor Perry. Thank you. Jack, thank you.